Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Your word is the truth. We receive your word this day, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it, and it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We're going to continue on our conquering series where we're talking about conquering anything and everything that is hindering us in our walk with the Lord. Today we're going to talk about conquering the lack of knowledge. It is important that you and I get the knowledge of God. We see in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. If we don't have revelation knowledge of the ways of the Lord, we're going to be sitting ducks for the enemy to take us and bring all kind of destruction. Evil spirits come into us, block us, hinder us, and stop the work of God coming forth in our life. Because of no knowledge, the people went into captivity. You and I must get the knowledge of God. It comes from the Word that is going to be revealed by the Holy Spirit. As you spend time in the Word, He will take that Word. He writes it in your heart. He writes it in your mind. And He opens the eyes of your understanding, bringing revelation to you. In Hosea, we see in chapter 4, in verse 1, He says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Why? Because there's no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. What does God want? He wants the truth to come forth. He wants the knowledge of God. He wants the mercy, which is the love of God in action to bring forth His promises, Him manifesting Himself in our life. Well, what happened to these guys? In verse 6 it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? Because they rejected knowledge. These people had heard knowledge. It had come to them, but they rejected it. They didn't take hold of it and do it and put it into operation in their life. And notice what God says, I also will reject thee. Thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also forget thy children. God wants us to hear his word and then put it into operation in our life. That's why we must be hearers and doers of the word. We can't be forgetful hearers. God expects you to take hold of his word and do it. Put it in operation in your life so that it can bring forth fruit. And so you can possess the promises of God. They rejected knowledge because they didn't want to follow the way of the Word of God. Therefore, you and I must get the knowledge of God. We're going to get the knowledge of God. Who's going to be our source? Of course, it is the Lord. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3. Here it says that for the Lord God is a God of knowledge. He is a God of knowledge. And He is a God who's going to reveal revelation knowledge to you. He wants to impart his knowledge to you so that you get the mind of Christ in you through the word in you. In the measure that you have the knowledge of God in you is the measure that the mind of Christ has come into you. It's not in you just because you're born again. A lot of many people say, well, I'm just claiming the mind of Christ. You don't claim the mind of Christ. It comes through the word in you, and the more that your word, mind is renewed, then you're going to have the mind of Christ as you're thinking as God is thinking. Therefore, we must get the knowledge of God. And we see that, of course, Jesus went forth. He was preaching the gospel. And we see in Isaiah chapter 11, over here in verse 2, it speaks of the spirit of the Lord that was resting upon Jesus. This is speaking of him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. These are the things that were upon Jesus. And these are the things that he's going to bring forth to you. And how does he do it? Jesus and the word are one. His word as it comes to you, he's going to bring this unto you, and he will bring forth the knowledge of God. Well, if we're going to have the knowledge of God, we must see what the word says that are going to be prerequisites for us to see this knowledge. In Proverbs chapter 1, and verse 7, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You want to get the knowledge of God? We've got to have the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is what we realize that God's word is the truth. If we walk in line with it, we'll see his blessings. If we don't walk in line with it, then curses are going to come upon us. We must have the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. We should hate evil and hate sin, as it says in Proverbs 6. And the fear of the Lord will cause us to depart from all evil, that we will choose the way of the Lord, because we know if we walk contrary to his word, judgments are going to come upon us as we sin willfully. Therefore, it's important that you have the fear of the Lord 
and you get the knowledge of God because you know his ways are the right ways. And you are going to walk in the ways of the Lord. You're going to put the word of God first place in your life. Well, we had a problem here with the people back then. They wouldn't listen to the Lord. Proverbs 1.23 says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I'll pour out my spirit upon you, and I'll make known my words unto you. He'd bring revelation of his ways if we'll just receive what he says and also be correctable. Every one of us must be correctable so that we can receive the truth and walk in the ways of the Lord. Well, the problem was many things, but we see down in verse 29, he says, For they hated knowledge. They didn't want the knowledge of God. They wanted to walk after their own ways. And they did not choose the fear of the Lord. You've got to choose the fear of the Lord to choose the things that God tells us to choose. We're supposed to choose the things that please Him, choose the things that He tells us to walk in. Remember, you and I are bought with a price. We're not our own. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus. We belong to the Lord, and you and I are to glorify Him and walk in His ways and totally submit unto Him. Jesus said, if any man come after me, he's to first of all deny himself, take up his cross daily, which is crucify in the flesh, and then follow after me. That's what he spec expects. Well, if we're going to get the knowledge of God, we see here in Proverbs 2, 3, he says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lift up thy voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, and search for her as hid treasures. We're going to pray, we're going to seek, we're going to search for the knowledge of God, the understanding that God wants to bring forth for us. Then you're going to understand the fear of the Lord, and you're going to find the knowledge of God. So God expects you to seek for it. That means you're going to spend time in the Word. You're going to spend time studying. If you study the Word of God and you look up all the scriptures on every subject and you spend time looking up the words and, and just looking up all these scriptures and getting this Word in you, God takes this Word, writes it in your heart, writes it in your mind, and He will bring revelation as you do it and it will be a, become a part of your lifestyle. And that's what He's expecting to come forth in our life. Well, we've got to apply all our members. In Proverbs chapter 22, you see in verse 17, he says, Bow down thine ear, hear the words of the wise, ply thine heart unto my knowledge. We've got to be willing to hear, hear the word of God, hear what he's saying to us, and apply our heart. We want our heart to be applied towards getting the knowledge of God so we learn God's ways, so we'll know the things that he wants us to do. Also, We've got to separate ourselves from the things that are not of the Lord. In Nehemiah chapter 10, we see in verse 28, he makes this statement. He says, The rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nephilims, and all that had separated themselves, that's the key statement, from the people of the lands. I guarantee you, you're not going to get much revelation from God if you're walking with one foot in the world and one foot with God. Or you're walking in the flesh, or just doing whatever you want to do. God calls us to be a separated people. We are to be a separate people from the people of the lands of the world unto the law of God. What are you separated unto? The law of God, the word of God, their wives, their sons, their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. The Lord wants every single one of us to have knowledge and understanding. You don't depend on someone else. He wants you to have the word in you. He wants you to know the truth. He wants you to walk in his ways so that you know what God wants you to do in every situation as you're putting his word first place in your life. Well, how's this going to happen? Well, we're going to be taught the word of God. This is why it's important for all who are in the ministry to bring forth the word of God. This is my responsibility. I've got to do this if I'm going to be fulfilling what God's called me to do. Ecclesiastes 12.9 says, Moreover, the preacher was wise. I want to be wise. I don't want to be said at the end of my days, you weren't wise. You didn't do a good job. The preacher was wise. He still taught the people knowledge. We need knowledge which comes from the word. Yea, he gave good heed, and he sought out and set in order the many proverbs. All the proverbs are all the truths of the word of God. It says he sought them out. You've got to have to spend time in the Word. I've got to spend time looking up every single scripture, looking up the word meanings, looking up tense, voice, mood, or the verbs, looking at these things and discovering what's being said and set in order the many truths or proverbs about a particular subject in order to bring forth the truth on every particular message that we would do, which is exactly what I do. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. What should he be bringing forth? Should he be just 
carrying on and just talking about whatever he wants, telling stories, telling jokes, doing entertainment things. No. He wants to find acceptable words. What's acceptable to the Lord? That which was written was upright, even words of truth. The Bible says we're to preach the word. What needs to come forth? You need to hear the word. The word, and every time you're hearing the word, God's writing that word in your heart and mind. He's bringing revelation to you, open the eyes of your understanding, and he's bringing that revelation knowledge to you so you can take hold of it and do it and walk in it in your life so that then God can perform his promises for you. It's important that every single person who is in the ministry spend the time in the word of God and take the word, set in order the many Proverbs, and teach the people knowledge, and it's going to be the teaching of the word of God. Well, as we're doing this, there's no shortcuts. Many people say, well, I just want to know what I got to do and so I can do it and go live my life however I want. No, there's no shortcuts to spiritual growth. There's no shortcuts to getting the knowledge of God. You're going to have to spend the time in the Word of God. As we see in Isaiah 28, 9, he says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? He says, Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. That means those that have come out of being spiritual babies. God wants us to grow up. As you take the word, you really begin to study the word and apply it, you will develop and you will come out of spiritual babyhood and begin to walk in the ways of the Lord. Drawn means removed from the breasts. And so this is talking about someone that's not on milk anymore. Remember, we desire the sincere milk of the word that we might grow thereby, as it says in 2 Peter, or 1 Peter 2, 2. That's what we do when we grow up as a babe in Christ. But then we are to go, go forth and really develop in the things of God. And how's it going to be? It's going to be precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Scripture after scripture, command, this word precept means command after command. You're going to command after command, rule, rule after rule, all these things, here a little, there a little, scripture on scripture. It's almost like you're building your spiritual house, as it talks about. As you're taking the word and hearing and doing it and hearing and doing it, you are building your spiritual house in your life. And it's going to bring forth fruit in all areas. And you are going to grow up and you are going to become strong in the Lord. And this is what God expects. And you're well able to overcome, but it's going to take spiritual strength in order to conquer the enemy. And the only way you're going to get it is through the word of God in you. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. He says, I will give you pastors according to mine heart. What kind of pastors according to his heart? They're going to feed you knowledge and understanding. If they're not feeding you knowledge and understanding, there's a problem. So I saw these scriptures all 30 years ago, and I determined I am going to feed people knowledge and understanding. I am not going to fail the Lord and not do the things that he wants. I want to be a pastor after his heart. So my responsibility is to feed you knowledge. That's why we give you scripture after scripture, point after point on every subject, so that you can get the knowledge and the understanding of the word of God. Now, if we're going to really develop in the knowledge of God, we've got to know the things that God considers holy and important to him. We see in Proverbs chapter 9, over in verse 10, he says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's not only the beginning of knowledge, but also the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So we get the knowledge of the things that are holy, that are set apart, the things that God says that you and I are to do then that's going to produce spiritual understanding in our life. And as we get the Word of God in us, what are we to do? We're not just to let it slip. Because remember, the devil comes to try to take the Word out of your heart. Just because you heard the Word doesn't mean it stay in your heart. You're going to have to walk in it and do it and not give place to his temptations to walk contrary because if not, he will take the Word out of the midst of your heart. Well, Proverbs 10, 14 says, Wise men lay up knowledge. We're going to keep the knowledge of God. We're going to keep the word in us. We're not going to let the devil come and take it out. But the mouth of foolish is near destruction. So we're going to lay up and hold on to, store up the knowledge of God so that we have the word of God in us. And what happens? As that word stays in you, having been written in your heart and written in your mind, the Holy Spirit will quicken that word and bring that up to you. And scriptures will come up to you all the time, showing you what to do, telling you this, telling you that, leading you, guiding you, bringing you what the Holy Spirit wants you to know at that point in time. Well, if you don't have the Word in you, how's He going to bring anything up? He's going to bring up what you have on the inside of you, and you need to have the Word in you. We see another thing that's important about the knowledge of God in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9. He says, Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. 
We want to get delivered. We want to get set free from every bondage. It's going to take knowledge. You've got to have knowledge of what God has done for you, knowledge of your weapons, knowledge of how, how the enemy works, knowledge of, of what you are to do and what God expects of you, and knowledge to put into operation so that you can see God bring forth the deliverance. Of course, it's going to be for the just. You've got to be walking righteous. You're not going to see anything happen if you're not walking right before the Lord. Through knowledge, the just, the righteous, who are walking in his ways are going to see deliverance come forth. At the same time, he doesn't want you to be running around with people or listening to people that are not bringing forth knowledge. Proverbs 14, 7 says, Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. If you don't hear the word coming out of someone, why would you want to spend time listening to them? You don't want to listen to that. He says, get out, get away from the presence of a foolish man, as he describes them, someone that's not speaking things that are in line with the word. We want to hear truth. We want to hear the knowledge of God. That is what God is wanting to bring. You don't want to waste your time hearing anything that is not bringing forth the knowledge of God. That's why you don't watch hardly anything out there on the TV, movies are eliminated, all these things that are not bringing forth the truth of the knowledge of God. Don't waste your time. Remember, you are a sojourner. You are a pilgrim in this land. This is a short period of time. Life is like a vapor, and you are training for reigning in the life to come. You are to develop your walk with the Lord and fulfill the calling of God on your life and see God accomplish His work in you, because everything we're doing is actually training for reigning in the life to come, you know. When your uh, days are over, you're going to either hear, you're going to hear something good or hear something bad. Your, all your works are going to be judged, remember, tried by fire. The ones that remain, you're going to be rewarded. The ones that don't, you're going to suffer loss, as the Bible says. We're not interested in suffering loss. Therefore, we only want to hear the things that are in line with the Word of God. Proverbs 15, 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. So we get the knowledge of God, and we want to use it right. We want to put it in operation. We want to learn to speak the word. We want to learn to use the knowledge of God and put it forth in our life and also to minister it to others at the same time. And we're going to disperse that. The Bible even says in verse 7, the lips of the wise will disperse knowledge. God wants you to be a vessel that's delivering the knowledge of God, delivering the truth wherever you're going. People need to hear the truth. Don't hold it all in. You're supposed to be delivering that which comes into you and giving it out to other people so that they can know the truth. We can't just sit there and just hold it all into us and be afraid of what somebody might say. How are they going to come to the place of repentance or how are they going to know the truth if they don't hear? They need to ha hear you and me sharing the gospel with other people. At the same time, you also understand when you have the knowledge of God that you just got to watch what you're speaking. You just can't be going around speaking anything you want. Proverbs 17, 27 says, He that hath knowledge spareth his words. Because he realized words are important. And if you're going to speak words, you want to be sure you're speaking right words. You don't want us to be babbling on. You want to get rid of that over-talkative spirit. You want to cast that out. You want to be one that's going to be only speak the things that God wants. And this is what he's expecting for us. And a man of understanding will have an excellent spirit. And of course, that's what we want for the Lord. Well, as you're getting the knowledge of God, it says over here in Proverbs chapter 24, down here in verse 4, he says, By knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all pleasant, precious, and pleasant riches. The riches of Christ are going to come to you. All the things that Jesus has for you. We're not talking about the riches of this world. The riches of Christ. And he wants to bring forth every promise, every blessing, everything that belongs to you as part of your inheritance to be manifest in you. How's it going to come? It's going to come through the knowledge of God. It's not going to come for you saying, well, I want God to do it. I'm waiting for God to do it. He gives you the knowledge of God so that you can act on the word so he will produce that in your life. The word is the power of God that will produce the promises of God in your life as you put it in operation. Verse 5, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. God wants you to increase in the things of God. We're not just supposed to be holding on until Jesus comes. We're to be increasing and abounding in everything we do. He wants you to increase in power, increase in strength, grow in all these things. He wants you to be abounding. So knowledge is going to be important. You're going to be increasing in the knowledge of God that's going to cause you to increase in strength. Then we see down in verse 14. He says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, 
when you found it, because remember, you're going to seek after it, you're going to spend time looking for the Lord to bring revelation to you as you're praying in the Word, then there shall be a reward, and the expectation shall not be cut off. God's Word, when you find the knowledge of God, the knowledge of wisdom, you get His understanding, what's going to happen? You're going to be rewarded. You're going to be rewarded. Your expectation will not be cut off. God is a performer of His Word. Remember, He watches over His Word to perform it. He's not holding anything back. He will perform it in your life. The enemy is the one who's hindering it. That's why you've got to cast out all the demons, and you've got to cut off the areas of sin and not give place to the enemy in your life. God is not holding anything back from those who walk uprightly. He's expecting you and me to walk in the ways of the Word. In fact, you walk in God's ways, you get the knowledge of God, and so He'll open up and even give you things that can even bring forth prosperity in your life. He talks about, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. There have been many Christians that got the knowledge of God and invented things. Knowledge of witty inventions. God's got all knowledge, and it's available to every one of us. If we seek after Him, He can give you knowledge of witty inventions, praise God. Things that He wants you to bring forth. Well, wisdom is going to come for, from you applying the Word of God as you're a hearer and a doer of it. And God wants us to get to the place of having wisdom and knowledge. Starts out with knowledge. You put it in operation doing it. Spiritual understanding is imparted to you. And then wisdom as you apply the Word, knowing what to do in every situation. Now Isaiah 33, 6 says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. It'll bring a stability, a steadfastness in your life. Are you one that's kind of up and down and wavering and on and off and, you know, you're just not consistent in the things you're doing? Well, we need to get the knowledge and wisdom of God. Hear and do the Word. It will produce a stability in your life and also will produce the strength of salvation. The what strength actually here means the riches or the treasure, the wealth of salvation. It'll produce that. But you were here for the first time in the lower window, as you see, there's the word. When I put the cursor over it, it shows the word in either the Hebrew or Greek with the Strong's number corresponding to Strong's dictionary, and it shows the meaning of it. So here we're talking about the, the riches of its salvation. And salvation isn't just talking about getting born again. This is an all-encompassing word, referring to your deliverance, your prosperity, your victory, your peace, your welfare, everything that God has to bring forth in your life. That's what he wants. So we've got to get the knowledge of God. The measure that you've got, the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God is the measure that you'll come to stability. You say, well, I'm not too stable in my life in a lot of areas. Well, we've got to get the word in us and hear and do the word. Deliverance is important and we cast out demons all the time, but also you've got to get the word in you because you cast out demons and you don't fill yourself up with the word and walk in the word. You're still, you're going to be not stable and strong to be able to walk in the ways of the Lord and to resist the enemy and see fruit come forth in your life. Therefore, we've got to get the knowledge of God established in us. Without knowledge, we're going to be in trouble. We see in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, over here in verse 2. It says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Talking about the Jews, they had a zeal of God. There's a lot of Christians out there that have a zeal for God. But if it's not according to knowledge, it will be fruitless. The word knowledge, by the way, if you look in the lower window, is a word epigenosis, which means precise, correct knowledge. We're not talking about what I think the Word says. We're talking about what I know the Word says. And not that, oh, 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 I guess I got it off a little bit. No, we need to know it exactly. You need to know the Word precisely, accurately. You need to have correct knowledge of the Word of God. That's why we got to spend time studying it. So without the knowledge of God, we're just going to be spinning our wheels, and that's what we see happens to a lot of people. They be an ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They were ignorant. Ignorant means they did not know of God's righteousness. How are we going to know of God's righteousness? His word of righteousness. It shows you the way, the way of righteousness. It shows you the path. It shows you the things that he says and expects for us to do if we're going to see righteousness come forth in our life. Well, we're not going to be ignorant of God's righteousness. If you are, you'll just go and try to establish your own righteousness. What a lot of people do, just try to do their best. 
Well, we know doing our best isn't going to get it done. It's doing what the Word says. In the measure that you are a hearer and a doer of the Word of righteousness is the measure that you are submitting yourself to God's righteousness and seeing righteousness be established in you. Because the Bible says in Romans 6 that obedience produces righteousness and then the fruits of that righteousness will bring forth holiness in your life and the end of that is everlasting life. That's what he wants for us. Therefore, we got to, as we see, we got to be sure that we're getting the exact knowledge of God, not just being zealous, and that we're understanding God's righteousness, His ways, and we're going to walk in them. Another thing that's important in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 11, see, we've got to conquer anything that's going to hinder us, and a lack of knowledge is a big hindrance for Christians today from seeing victory come forth in their life. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. They didn't know how the enemy works. You know, some people say, we never talk about the devil. We only talk about God and about Jesus and the Word. Well, that's good, but the, talking about the devil is also important because that's part of the Word. And if we don't understand his devices and how he works, his tricks, his strategies, all the things that he does, we're not going to be wise to the things that he does. Therefore, we cannot be ignorant of his devices. Otherwise, what's going to happen? Satan will get an advantage of you. And he'll be able, he knows your weak points. He knows, he knows you like a book. And you've got to know all his tricks and strategies and all the things that he tries to pull on you so you don't give place to him in your life. If you're ignorant of the devil's devices, then you're not going to know how to uh, deal successfully and he end, will end up getting advantage of you. We see over in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 18, something else. Having the understanding, which refers to the mind, darkened, when you, your mind, uh, getting the Word of God in it, darkened because you don't have the light, being alienated from the life of God, through what? Through the ignorance, again, the lack of knowledge, is what this word means, that's in them. A lack of knowledge, being ignorant, causes you to not have understanding. You won't have the, sp the spiritual understanding of knowing what to do. It's like the light hadn't come. You're walking around in the dark. You can't see where you're going. And you're going to be alienated from the life of God. It was because of the blindness or the hardness of their heart that we see. And of course, your heart will get hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Your heart, heart will get hardened if you don't do the word that you hear because God expects us to take hold of the word, apply it in our life, and do it not just hear it and then cast it behind our back and go and do whatever we want to do. No. It's important that we do the Word through the knowledge of God. You're going to have the life of God manifest because Jesus comes to bring life and life more abundantly. If not, we're alienated from the life of God, the things that God wants to bring forth in our life. Another thing that we see, if we don't get the knowledge of God, 1 Peter 1, over here in verse 14, as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Lack of knowledge. Well, we, what was the problem before we were born again? We're all walking by the lusts of the flesh. We're just walking our own ways. And here he's talking about how these guys could be fashioning themselves to the former lusts in their ignorance. They could go right back into it. What's going to be the key? Obedience. Obedience. God's looking for us to be obedient in all things. Obedient to all the things that he tells us to do. His Word is the instruction book of the, in showing the, our responsibilities in the covenant relationship we have with Him. We're in covenant relationship. God has His part to play. We have our part to play. That's why it says, if you do such and such, then He will do such and such. If we don't do our part, then He's not going to be able to do His part. For instance, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, He's not going to be able to forgive you your trespasses. We've got to do our part. If you don't draw nigh to God, He's not going to be able to draw an eye to you because we have our part to play and then God will do his. So we need to be obedient. And if not, what will happen? We're going to walk by something. If we don't walk by the word, we're going to end up walking by the less of the flesh in our ignorance, lack of knowledge, because we just walk in the ways of whatever comes, desires, thoughts, feelings, and so forth. And you never can trust them whatsoever. We see in 1 Peter 2.15, so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. People that are not walking in line with the Word are really foolish in God's sight. He wants us to be wise, not foolish. And we're foolish if we don't know God's ways. 
Can we know God's ways? Absolutely. He's not holding anything back. His word has been given to us. The Holy Spirit's been given to us. He's promised to lead us and to guide us into all the truth. And he will open the eyes of our understanding and write that word in and give you revelation. He'll show you what to do in every situation. If not, we're going to be walking around being foolish. And we're not going to see God bring forth what he purposes in our life. We also have to watch out, as it says over here in 2 Peter chapter 2, that we don't just go speaking things that we have no business speaking. In 2 Peter 2.12, he says, These as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not. This word understand not, again, is this word for being ignorant. Same word here in the number 50 in Strong's, being ignorant or not knowing. They were speaking evil of things that they didn't know about. That's why you've got to watch your words. Don't just go babbling on about something if you don't know what you're talking about. They utterly perish in their own corruption. That means judgment's going to come upon them. That's why the Bible says, let your words be few. And you can't say before the angel, it was an error. No, you're going to be judged according to our words. We're going to be either justified by our words, or we're going to be held accountable and judged according to our words. Our words are very important. Also, God wants us to know all the things of the Word of God, and He wants you to let the Holy Spirit operate and manifest in you. 1 Corinthians 12.1 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. He doesn't have us, want us ignorant or not understanding and not knowing about spiritual gifts. Because if you've received the Holy Spirit since you've been born again, the Holy Spirit now on the inside of you, you have at least one gift or more that He wants to function in your life. The gifts of the Spirit have been given, as He says down in verse uh, 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The Holy Spirit wants to manifest Himself through you and through me. And He has given us gifts, and He wants us to yield to them. He talks about all the gifts of the Spirit, revelation gifts, which are the, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. There's power gifts, which are the working of miracles, and the gift of faith, and the gifts of healings, and also the vocal gifts, which are the gift of prophecy, and also the a gift of diverse tongues, and also interpretation of tongues. And he goes on and says, All these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man, that's every one of us, severally, as he will. In other words, God just divides them out. You may have a particular word of knowledge operating in you. You might have a gift of prophecy. You, might, you have some sort of a gift if you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. He wants you to seek after those gifts and desire to prophesy, as he says, and to start functioning in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Bible even talks about the fact that uh, everybody can, can function in the, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit he talks about here about how the pe people that are speaking forth, he says in verse 31, you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and may all may be comforted. He wants us to function in whatever gifts. And he says to covet to prophesy, have strong desire. The Lord wants you to, to really seek after functioning in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts are there, and we need to learn to get filled up with the Holy Spirit by praying and praising and worshiping God to bring a filling of the Spirit, and then expect the gifts of the Holy Spirit to begin to operate. See, this is part of the knowledge of God that He wants to bring forth because He wants to use you in ministry. Well, if we don't have the knowledge of God, we've already seen several things. We're going to be captive to the enemy. We're going to be destroyed. We're going to not be walking right, righteous before Him. Uh, we're going to be giving place to the devil's wiles. Well, he's going to be taking advantage of us in our life. We'll be alienated from the life of God. We'll be doing foolish things, speaking wrong things that bring judgment, hindering the Holy Spirit's operation. You'll be hindering God from accomplishing the things that He wants. This is why God wants us to get the knowledge of God. And that's why we must get precise correct knowledge. Over in Luke chapter 1, we see something very interesting. In verse 3, <clears throat> here, Luke is speaking here, and he says, It seemed good to me also, the King James says, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. Well, this isn't a very good translation that they see here. The reason being is because where it says, having had perfect understanding, and I've learned to look up all the words. And I don't sit there and make negative comments about things that are in translation unless there's a reason to. When you put the cursor over the word perfect, 
It is a word which means exactly or accurately. Not talking about perfect. He's talking about exact, accurate, and this word understanding is not what doesn't mean understanding at all. It is a verb which means to follow after, to follow after. So what he's saying here literally, which Young's literal, we always put up Young's literal because it's the best translation in the New Testament that I've ever seen in the world and is outstanding in a lot of things in the Old Testament. He writes it, having followed from the first after all things exactly. That's really literally what it says. Otherwise, he was following after, the, after all things exactly. Otherwise, he wasn't deviating from them. He was looking at everything exactly the way they were because he didn't want to make any mistakes. He wanted to see what was exactly the truth. He goes on and says that thou mightest know, and this is a word, epigonosco, a form of this other word meaning precise or correct, accurate knowledge, exact, accurate knowledge, that you might know the certainty of the things wherein thou hast been instructed or what you've been taught. In other words, what he's saying is, I am going to follow after these things exactly so that you can have the knowledge, the exact, precise, correct knowledge of God so you can know the certainty of all these things. You will know that you know that these things are true and that God did them and he will also perform everything that he says in his word to bring forth the promises in your life. This is the instruction book on life, the word of God is. And God will watch over his word to perform it. If we're not seeing something happen, then it's not God holding it back. It's because we don't have knowledge in some aspect. We need the knowledge of God. God is a performer of his word, and he will perform it in our life. We've got to get the knowledge of God. We even see in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 34, he makes this statement. Awake to righteousness, and sin not. The Bible says sin has no dominion over us. We don't have to sin any longer. The Bible says in Romans 6:11 that we're dead to sin, we're alive unto God. It goes on and says, let not sin have dominion over you. You know, you're not to obey it in the lust of the flesh any longer. Now you're to yield yourself to obedience to the word, and sin has no dominion over us. We don't have to walk in the ways of sin. Doesn't mean we can't. Doesn't mean we don't have to, and we shouldn't be. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. Why are not they not awakened to righteousness? Because they don't have the knowledge. In the measure that you have the word in you will be the knowledge of God so that you will wake to righteousness and you'll walk in his ways and then you won't sin. See, if we walk contrary to God's word, we're going to walk in sin, whether we even know it or not. It's important that you and I are walking in the ways of the Lord. Some people say, well, is God holding me accountable if I don't know something? Yes, he is. Because you're expected to learn the word, which you can. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Leviticus 5.17 says, If a soul sin and commit any of these things that are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist, this word wist is an old English word that really means know, though he knows it not, yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. Ignorance doesn't make it. No. God expects us to know it. So a lack of knowledge is going to cause a lot of problems in our life. This is why getting the word in you is absolutely essential. And what is, what's the Lord want us to come to the place of? In Romans chapter 15, he says over here in verse 14, he says, I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you're full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. That's what God wants. He wants us filled with all knowledge. Now you say, well, that almost seems overwhelming. There's a lot of things that I don't know. Well, we start where we are. Today's the first day of the rest of your life. Start putting the Word of God first place. Start studying the Word. Start writing down the Scriptures. Get organized. Get some notebooks or whatever so you can write these things down. Start getting the Scriptures and knowing them, spending time in them, studying the Word. No, you're not going to be overwhelmed, but you're going to be line upon line, precept upon precept, here little, there little, as God's going to take that. It's almost like building blocks in a house, and you're going to start pouring the word into you, and God is going to start doing a great work and bringing revelation to you. We see also, we've got to guard our mind, because the devil will come after the word, remember, that comes into your heart, and he wants to bring doubt, confusion. He wants to bring double-mindedness into you. He wants to stop you from walking in the ways of the Word. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, 
We are to cast down imaginations, which refers to reasonings, mental reasonings, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That means that anything that's trying to raise itself in estimation above the knowledge of God doing the word, then that's the enemy working. You're not to let him do it. Otherwise, when the word says such and such, if something comes along and, well, I think I'll do this instead, you've let that raise an estimation. You've let that kind of take the place of the of word, the word of God. If the word says we're going to cast out demons, then we're going to cast out demons. If your mind says, well, I don't want to do that, well, then that's something exalting it, and that's wrong. If the word says, well, we're going to pray without ceasing, then, well, I'll just pray if I feel like it. Well, again, same thing. We're not going to get anywhere. God was really wants us to come to see the lifestyle of Jesus Christ established in you, and he wants you to get the word in you such that this is the way you live. This is the way you think. This is the way you talk. This is the things that you do all the time. And when you walk in that way, you're going to see God manifest himself greatly in you and through you. He says you're to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You must govern your mind. The devil will sow all kinds of negative thoughts in you. It's imperative that you take your thoughts captive. Do not let negative thoughts come into your mind that are contrary to the word and let them work at you. You cast those thoughts down, cast down the imagination, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In fact, you're supposed to be ready, have a readiness or being prepared to reven avenge or revenge all disobedience. What disobedience? You gotta understand these negative thoughts that are coming into you against the word are disobedience from the enemy. They're trying to get you to be disobedient. And you're going to be ready to avenge the disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Your obedience is fulfilled when you do what? When you cast down the imaginations, when you bring into captivity every high thing, that exalts, every thought and everything that's trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We're going to do what the Word says. We even see in Ephesians chapter 4 something that's important in verse 11 and following. The Lord gave gifts to men. He says he gave apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What's their purpose? For the perf perfecting or the maturing, the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Who's going to do the work of the ministry? All the saints. For the edifying of the body of Christ. That's what's going to be the result of every one of us carrying out the work of the ministry. Till, how long is this going to be? Till we all, all doesn't mean just a few. That's every one of us here. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. And again, this word is epigenosis, meaning the precise, correct knowledge of God. God wants the precise, correct, accurate knowledge of God established in you. And what's going to be the result of all this? That we come to the perfect man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Do we see the perfect man operating in the body of Christ today? I don't think so. We see a lot of carnality. We see a lot of people that don't know a whole lot about the things of God. It can seem like a lot, many are lukewarm. No, we're to grow up into the perfect man, which is going to be the full, full ministry of Jesus Christ manifesting. And remember, Jesus is going to present a glorious church to him that's going to be full of glory and not, not any spot or wrinkle. The church is going to go out in, a, in gl the glory of God. It is not going to be weak and limping to the time when Jesus comes, which means you and I are all going to grow up. We're going to grow up. We're going to get filled with the knowledge of God. We're going to walk in the ways of the Word. We are going to grow up to become to the union of the faith, the knowledge, the exact knowledge of the Son of God unto the perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so he can manifest himself the way he wants, and he will do this. Praise God. Look at uh, over in Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verse 5. He says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, what's that? All the promises of God. We have an inheritance that's reserved in heaven for us. First Peter chapter 1 says that. It belongs to us. And the hope is laid up for heaven, all that we can possess everything, including eternal life. Where have you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel? which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, the word is being taught everywhere, and bringeth forth fruit, which is what it's supposed to do in your life, as it doth also in you, since the day you heard of it, and knew 
you had the, you came thoroughly acquainted with the grace of God in truth. The grace of God, the favor of God gets manifested how? In truth. The Word of God is the truth. And that truth will make you free. That truth will bring forth the things that God purposes in your life. It's going to be through the working of the Word of God. That's why he goes on down here in verse 9, a little farther, and he says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire, which means, is a word I tell you, which means a demand of what's due you, that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. God wants you filled with the knowledge of his will. Many people say, well, what the, what the, what's the will of the Lord for me to do? God wants us to know the will of the Lord because it's in the Word. Everything is going to be in line with the Word. And again, this is the precise, correct knowledge of the Word of God, His will, which is His Word, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What's going to be the purpose of that? That we might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. God's looking at your walk. He's looking at your works, which is showing forth your walk. He knows us by our fruit, doesn't He? And what's the knowledge going to produce? Fruit, as we saw. In Colossians 1, verse 6, it talked about 5 and 6. So we're going to walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, meaning we're going to please the Lord. Hey, when you please the Lord, God's going to bring his blessings upon you. He's a rewarder of those that seek him diligently and those that please him and walk in his ways. Being fruitful in every good work. Fruitfulness. God wants you fruitful in everything that you're doing, all the good works. And increasing in the knowledge of God. We just don't get a little bit of knowledge. We're going to be growing in knowledge. We're going to be increasing in the precise, correct knowledge of God and growing up in all these things. He goes on in Colossians 2, verse 2, he talks further about this. And he says that their hearts would be, might be comforted, being knit together in love into all the riches of the full assurance of understanding. And here it says to the acknowledgement, but this really means the full knowledge of the mystery in or unto the, the full knowledge, the precise, correct knowledge of the mystery of Christ. It's the same word, epigenosis, or as Young's brings it out down below here, he refers to it as the full knowledge of the secret of God the Father and, and of the Christ. So what is God wanting? He's want us to come to the full knowledge of the mystery. See, all the mysteries of the kingdom are to be revealed unto you and to me. We can know all the spiritual mysteries. Faith is a mystery. All these different things are mysteries. And you can know them all because God will reveal them unto you and bring revelation to us. Well, how are we gonna, we're going to do this through the Word. And what's going to happen is the Word is coming into you. It says in Colossians 3.10 that you and I are to put on the new man. Have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge. You and I are to be renewed, transformed by the renewing of our mind renewed in the precise, correct, accurate knowledge so that you know what God's going to do. How can you ever come to the place of faith and expecting God to do something if you don't have the precise, correct knowledge? You can't just, well, I hope maybe God will do such and such. No, you've got to know His Word. When you pray, you, don't, you pray His Word and you know exactly what He'll do. That's how you can take hold of the promise because you know the Word is a Scripture promise that's already been given unto you. Therefore, you're going to take hold of that and speak that into being to release it to come to pass. Because your words speak the promises into being to release them to come to pass. Therefore, in the measure that you got your mind renewed to the precise, correct, accurate new knowledge of God is the measure that you put on the new man. See, well, I thought I was a new man in Christ when I got born again. You got a new spirit, but you didn't get a change in your mind. You're going to put on the new man in the area of your mind through being renewed to the truth of God's word. And that's what he wants. He wants us to get this. This is why he's praying this prayer over here in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. He's praying for the church there, just like he prayed for the church at Colossae. He says here in church, uh, Ephesians 1, 16, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, as he says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the precise, correct knowledge. You can pray this prayer for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are giving me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the precise, correct knowledge of you as I'm studying your word. And he'll do that. He'll open the eyes of your understanding and bring the revelation to you. You see, God wants every one of us to come to the place of having his knowledge. A lack of knowledge 
will give place to the enemy. It'll stop you from possessing the promises, and you won't see God manifesting himself the way he intends. Look at 1 Timothy 2.4. He says he will have all men to be saved, and not only just to be saved, to come unto the knowledge, the precise, correct knowledge of the truth. He wants every one of us. We, want to, we don't just get saved and then that's it. No, now he wants us to come to the knowledge of the truth so we can walk in his ways, so we can conquer the enemy, we can possess promises, we can be used to the Lord, we can see God accomplish all the things that he wants to in our life, and he will do it. We've got to get the word of God. That's why we've got to check out everything that we hear. The Bible talks about in 1 Timothy 4, 1, how that the Spirit speaks expressly in the latter times, some are going to depart from the faith. What are they doing? They're giving heed to seducing, deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. That means there's doctrines in the church that are coming from the devil. Now it would be anything that's contrary to the Word of God that is not in line with the truth. And they've got all these things that they're speaking that are contrary to the truth. And here you and I are to believe and to know the truth. Be thoroughly acquainted with, know the truth of the Word of God. He expects you to know the truth. How are you going to ever be set free if you don't know the truth? And of course, how are we going to know the truth? We're going to spend time in the Word. Remember what it says in John 8, in verse 31. The Bible says that if you continue in my Word, abide, remain, continue to do this Word, then are you my disciples. What's that tell you? Not everybody's a disciple just because they're born again. The disciples are the ones who continue in the Word. That means a disciplined one, one who's a hearer and a doer. He's trained. He, he's, a disciple is this one who's been trained, in, and he, this is his lifestyle now. He's carrying it out. Not all Christians are disciples, unfortunately. And what's going to be the result when you become a disciple? This is someone who's continuing in the Word. Then you're going to know the truth, and the truth will make you free. There's a certain level of knowledge of truth we get from revelation, but you'll never know the truth in reality until you hear and do it and work it in your life and it becomes your lifestyle that you're a disciplined one, a true disciple. Then you're going to know the truth, and what's that truth going to do? It's going to make you free. It's going to set you at liberty in your life, and you're going to see the promises of God that are going to come to pass. We also see that if we have given place to the enemy through not walking in his ways, or we didn't have the knowledge of God and he came and took us captive, what do we got to do? We got to come to the place of getting the word in us. It tells us in 2 Timothy 2.25, the guy who's uh, been captive by the enemy, he says, we're to in meekness instruct those that oppose themselves. How would you be opposing yourself if you're not doing the word? You're opposing yourself because you're expected to walk in the way of the word. If per God peradventure will give them repentance, changing their mind, to the acknowledging, this is a noun in the Greek, it really would mean to the precise, correct knowledge of the truth. Because where, how are you going to come to repentance? You've got to come in line with the truth. You've got to come in line with the Word. You, instead, you correct the error that you were thinking or speaking or believing, and then you come in line with the Word of God, and you start doing it. Then once you come in line with the truth, what's going to happen? You're going to recover yourselves out of the snare of the devil, as you can overcome as you do in the Word. Notice, he took you captive by him at his will. Why? Because of a lack of knowledge, giving place to the enemy, opposing ourself, instead of doing the things that God wants us to do. We even see in 2 Timothy 3, verse 7, it speaks something else. If we back up to verse 5, we back up even to verse 1. He talks about, in the last days, perilous times will come. We're certainly moving down that road, but we're not there yet. The perilous times are really going to come down the road as we go down this last day's period. Men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parrots, unthankful and holy. That's certainly like society today, isn't it? Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, without self-control, just doing whatever they want, fierce, despisers of those that are good. We see that more and more, don't we? And especially, I think, in the last year or two, it just isn't really advancing in the world, isn't it? Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, everything shouting for you to go please yourself instead of being lovers of God. He goes on and says, having a form of godliness, this is talking about people in the church, people that are religious-minded, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. 
we find many people are not believing in the power of God, which is in His Word, to perform His Word in their life. They become religious-minded, and they don't really expect God to do anything. They just think God's in control of all things, so everything that must happen must be God. When it's not, it's the devil working to bring in all this destruction. So they don't understand the power of God. And it goes on and says in verse 7 that they're ever learning, but never able to come to the precise, correct knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they deny the power of God and they're not doing it. They're learning lots, but if you don't put it in operation and you do the word, putting the power of God in operation to bring forth the manifestation of the truth and freedom in your life. These guys are ever learning, but never able to come to it. Many people are like that. Well, they've been lear learning and learning, but they never come to the truth, and they're still in bondage in all kinds of areas. That's not what God wants. He wants us all to come to the place of under knowing the truth. At the same time, as we come to the knowledge of the truth, what are we expected to do? To do it. If you have the knowledge of the truth and you don't do it, what is that? That's sin. Remember what the Bible says, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's sin. There's not only sins of omission, but there's sins of, excuse me, sins of commission, but there's also sins of omission, where we didn't do the things that we know. So we see in Hebrews 20, 10, 26, what's it say? If we sin willfully, that means we know that what we're doing is contrary to the word. This is the guy that's already got knowledge. If we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge, the precise correct knowledge, so you did know the truth, of the truth, and there's, no, there's not going to remain any more sacrifice for sins, but a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. See, God expects us to take hold of his word and do it. It's not just pick and choose. I like this and I don't like this and forget about this. No. His word is the instructions for you to live, and he expects you to be a doer of the word. You have a covenant with him. You're in covenant relationship. You're now to walk in the ways of the word of God, which is going to bring you liberty. Remember, it's the law of liberty. It's the perfect law of liberty. They'll bring victory. It's the law of Christ. It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that makes you free from the law of sin and death, so you can walk in victory in your life. It says, certain fearful looking for of judgment indignation will devour their adversaries. It says, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. By the way, the word despised is really not a good translation. It is a word which literally means to set aside or disregard. To set aside or disregard. Not like I hated God's word. A lot of people say, well, I don't hate God's word or whatever. I'm not like that. But if you set aside and disregard it, as Jung brings out a better understanding of this, set it not, essentially. If you set it not or disregard his word, what happened? These guys had judgment and died. Pretty severe. Of how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall you be, he be thought worthy who's trodden underfoot the Son of God? What do you mean? How could I trod underfoot the Son of God if you don't do according to the knowledge that he's given you? We're trotting him. We're ignoring his word. We're putting it under our foot. And it's count of the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified that washed you from your sins in this nothing because you're now going to walk in the ways of sin. An unholy thing, and it's done despite or insult. This word despite means insult to the Spirit of grace. See, the Holy Spirit's come on the inside of you to lead you and guide you in the way of the truth. Not, and not to sit there and watch you do, walk in the flesh and do whatever you want to do and think that it's no big deal to him. No. He's come to manifest himself. He is a Holy Spirit who wants to manifest himself in your life. And you and I are to be holy as he is holy. He expects us to be that way. How's it going to happen? God's going to do it through what? His word. What's your part to play? Hear the word? Do it. Get the knowledge of God? Put it in operation. Carry it out? Watch God do the work. God will do the work in us. We can do nothing of ourselves, but God will do the work, praise God, and he will accomplish it in our life. Well, we see the problem is, though, many, oh, they got some knowledge of some things, but they didn't continue to walk in the ways of the Word of God. It talks about here about those in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, because that when they knew God, we know God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. Be sure that you're giving praise and honor and glory to the Lord and being thankful unto Him. If not, 
These guys that knew God at one time became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened because they weren't doing the things that God says. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do. You're going to walk in God's ways or you're, or you're going to see the repercussions for it. Oh, they thought they were wise, but they became fool. They did all kinds of crazy things, changing the glory of the uncorruptible God into all these images, false images. So God gave them up to the uncleanness, the lust of their own hearts, the dishonor of their own bodies between themselves. You have to have a reprobate mind and go in all kinds of wrong directions. We come down to verse 28. And he says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, precise in knowledge, or according to cor precise, correct knowledge. This is why. Get the word in you. Keep the word in you. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. Don't let the enemy take it out. Be sure you're in the word continually so that you're walking in his ways and you don't get away from it. God gave him over to a reprobate mind, an unapproved mind, to do the things that are not convenient. See, God is a jealous God. He's not going to have any other gods before him. And he's, he's not given us the knowledge of God, again, just to do whatever we want to do with it. It is given to us to walk in the ways of the Lord. And as you walk in the ways of the Lord, you are going to walk in fellowship with him, praise God. And that's what he wants. In fact, God wants you to come to the place that you are an expert in the things of God. James 3.13 says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge? The word endued with knowledge is a Greek word which means one having the knowledge of an expert. He's experienced. He's a hearer and a doer. He knows this stuff backwards and forwards. He knows his, he's an expert witness because he knows everything. That's where we're going to come to. We're not going to think, just know a little bit and think we know something. You need to know this like you know everything. The Word of God. That's what he wants. We want to be wise and one that's an expert in knowledge. And he's going to bring his great blessings our way. Second Peter chapter 1. He talks about in verse 2 how grace and peace will be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. Again, this precise, correct knowledge. You want God's grace and peace to be multiplied to you? It's going to be in the measure that you have the knowledge of God. It's not going to be just automatic. There's conditions for it, obviously, because you're going to walk in the way of the Word. Verse 3 goes on and says, According to His divine powers given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through what? the knowledge of Him. Everything that you have need of in life is given to you through the knowledge of God. You get the knowledge of God, you put it in operation, you hear it, you do it, you speak it, you think upon it, you carry it out in your life. It's going to give you everything, everything you have need of. He's called us to glory and virtue and He wants us to carry it out. And He gives us the exceeding great and precious promises that by these you and I can be partakers of the divine nature. It means we're not a partaker of the divine nature until we possess the promises experientially in our life, escaping the corruption that's in the world through lust. We're not going to walk in the way of the world. That's why you've got to be separate from the world. Friendship with the world makes you an enemy against God. You've got to be separate from the world, and also you're going to crucify that flesh, and you're not about to walk according to the ways of the flesh, or you're going to see all the corruption comes forth. He talks about how we're to add to a virtue, which is moral excellence, knowledge, as we're getting the knowledge of God, and temperance, which is self-control, which keeps the flesh in line, patience, which is steadfastness, which is of the soulish realm, keeping your soul realm in line when you study out what patience means, godliness, which is one who has become a hearer and a doer and godly reverence before the Lord, evidence because he's walking as a godly person in the, in, before him, brotherly kindness, because you're showing love to the brothers and sisters. We should never get in strife, have bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, petty little things, negative kind of things. Never. You and I are commanded to walk in love at all times. And also to everyone else, agape love, which is a love towards everybody. He goes on and says, If these things be in you and abound, then make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge, the precise, correct knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, he wants you to not be unfruitful. He doesn't want you to be barren of the knowledge of God. He wants you to see all the things that God wants. This word barren actually means someone who's lazy, shunning labor. They're not doing the things that they should. Barren's not really a good word. It means free from labor or at leisure. Otherwise, you're just going to be walking around doing your own thing, lazy, not fruitful. Fruitfulness comes because of doing the things that God says, see, in the knowledge of our Lord. 
And then he says, if you lack these things, you're blind. You cannot see you far off. You've forgotten. You've been purged from your old sins. So he says, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you're never going to fall. That is a great promise. We don't ever have to fall. God will keep you from falling if you do the things that he says. And you're going to make your calling and you're, you're being chosen sure before the Lord. At the same time, you can't be given place to the enemy and going back into bondage again. Look what it says down here in 2 Peter 2.20. If after they escaped the pollutions, all the defilement of the world, and how do you do it? The way you do everything, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, doing the Word of God, precise, correct knowledge. If you're again entangled therein, ah, you went back into the same old sin areas, and overcome, the latter end is worse with them in the beginning. We know that. When you cast out demons, you go back into sin, what happens? Seven more wicked come, and you're in worse shape than you are. You can lose your healing. Remember the guy that got healed at the pool of Bethesda there? He said, sin no, sin no more, lest the worst thing come on you. You, you, you go back from the things of God, you're going to get worse in some aspect in our life. Therefore, we're going to walk in the way of the knowledge of God. It even says here, it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness and after they've known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto it, because you're going to get worse. That's why God wants you to get, have the attitude, I'm going to get God's word and I'm going to hear it and do it and put it in operation in my life and I'm going, this is the way I'm going to live. And I'm going to continue to get the knowledge of God and act on it. And it, gets, it gives me spiritual understanding. And I gain wisdom. And I increase in knowledge. And I walk according to the way of the Word. And I'm going to get filled with the knowledge of the Lord. That's what He wants for every one of us. 2 Peter 3, verse 18 tells us, Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He wants you growing in it continually, spending the time in the Word of God. You know, we want to have the attitude that the Lord has. In fact, look what Paul makes a statement here in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2. He says, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He just wants to know all the things of God. That's what we want to know. We want to know all the things of the Word of God. And we even see what Paul's attitude was in Philippians chapter 3. Look what he says in verse 8. He says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. The knowledge of God shows you everything that you have need of for living and how to overcome, how to have victory, how to conquer the enemy, how to cast those spirits out, how to destroy the enemy's works against you, how to receive the promises of God, how to bring forth fruit, how to function in ministry, how to function in relationships. Everything you have need of, it's in the Word. And as you and I are hearers and doers of the word, we're going to see victory. He says, the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things. That's right. You're going to lose all the things of this world. You don't want the things of this world. They're a bunch of dung, as he says. I count them but dung that I may win Christ. We want the knowledge of God, and we want to possess everything that God has for us. How are you going to conquer the lack of knowledge? You're going to make sure you get the knowledge of God. What have we seen? If we don't have the knowledge of God, we're going to end up in captivity. We're going to be destroyed like those people that were destroyed for lack of knowledge, and they rejected it. Or we're going to be giving place to the enemy and seeing him destroy us. We're going to, see, we're going to not see the life of God and the blessings of God come forth. We'll be walking in the lusts. We'll be speaking and doing wrong things. We'll be hindering the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. But if we get the knowledge of God in us, what's going to happen then? You're going to know God's ways. You're going to have the revelation of the way of righteousness. When you get the knowledge of God in you and you start doing it, it's going to bring forth fruit. It's going to bring forth the promises of God. It's going to enable you to overcome. And you are going to walk in that way. You're not going to give place to the enemy. You're going to make your call in election. Sure, you're not even going to fall. You're going to come to the place of being fruitful in everything that you do. You see, we, we're going to have our, our chambers filled with precious riches, it says. We're going to see the stability in our life. We're going to see strength of salvation. We're going to be, of course, walking in the ways of righteousness. We're going to be following after all these things exactly, and we're going to be walking in the ways of righteousness. We're going to, sin is going to be eliminated in your life. We don't have to sin. We're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. And, of course, you're going to be, areas where you've been walking wrong, 
and you get in the knowledge of God and do it, you can recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. And you can come out of those bondages. Any bondage you're in, God will bring you out of it if you do what the Word says and you uh, obey what He says through the knowledge of God, the working of the Lord in your life, and you hear and do it, you will see God bring victory in your life. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your Word that reveals the importance of getting precise correct, accurate knowledge, which comes from the Word. I will study your Word. I will get your Word in me as I spend time in it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking that Word, writing it in my heart and mind, bringing me revelation of your ways. I will walk in those ways. I will be a hearer and a doer of your Word, and I will see your blessings come forth in my life. I will not let the enemy have place in my mind. I will cast down all those things that would come against the knowledge of God. I will bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I'm only going to speak the word. I will learn to spare my words and only speak what God wants me to speak. I'm going to hear what God wants me to hear. I'm going to guard myself so the enemy doesn't get a hold of me. I'm going to put on the new man, being renewed in the precise, accurate knowledge of God. And I thank you, Lord, that I am not going to sin willfully after I've received the knowledge, or I know judgments will come. I am going to walk in your word. I'm going to be a hearer and a doer of it consistently to be a disciple of the Lord, and I will know the truth, and the truth will make me free. I'm going to become the knowledge of an expert, because I'm going to know God's Word, and I'm going to be fruitful, because I will continually grow and increase in the knowledge of God, and I will walk in your ways. I'll be fruitful in every good work. I'll see you accomplish everything you want in my life and through me. Thank you, Lord, for the knowledge of God. I will put it first place in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. The knowledge of God. With the knowledge of God, you know what to do. That's how you'll have hope from the word in your mind. That's how you'll have faith, the word in your heart. And then you just do it and put it in operation. And you know God is going to perform it. Because the Word is the power of God in you. You work the Word, the power of God goes into operation. And you're going to see God bring everything forth in your life. Remember, He's not holding anything back. He's just a matter of us working the Word with our faith and seeing God bring it forth. You're going to use your authority against the enemy. You're going to use your faith and prayer and take hold of the promises as you speak the Word. You're going to use your mouth to speak these things into being. You're going to guard your mind. You're going to guard your heart. And you're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. If you do this, it'll transform you. I got a hold of this 30-some years ago. And I saw, this is what I got to do. Not just because my responsibility of teaching and studying all the Word and everything, but to teach it. I said, I got to get this in me. I got to get this in me, not only so I can teach it to others, but I got to do it myself because I got to walk in the ways of the Lord. I can't be in lack of knowledge. I've got to be a hearer and a doer. I got to bring forth fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. I got to be one who's wise before the Lord because I want to hear a good report. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in the joy of the Lord. And I want to see that when I've finished my days, that I have accomplished what God wants. There's only one way through the knowledge of God that you hear and do in your life. Father, I thank you and praise you that each one is going to take hold of this message and put it in operation. And we're going to study the Word as it, like we never studied it before. And we're going to get this Word in us and hear and do it. And we're going to keep this Word in us and not let the devil take it out. 
and we're going to see much fruit come forth. And we thank you for the great work. We're going to walk worthy of you with the all-pleasing and be fruitful in every good work. We're going to have the power of God resonant within us and manifesting out of us through the word. And we're going to see the work of God done in our life to bring every promise. And we're also going to be used of you in the ministry that you've called us to. Father, thank you. There'll be great fruit from this message as you and I hear and do it as we're all, every, each one here is doing it in Jesus' name. Amen.